I'll show you how to implement simple 2D sprite combat in Unreal Engine 5. But this method can also be applied to 2D 3D hybrid games. As the starting point I've prepared a stage from a tile map and a samurai based on the paper character class. If you want to follow along but don't know how to set up a basic 2D project in the first place, you should probably check out this video first. A link to the free assets I'm using can be found in the video description. Now let's get started with the combat mechanics. Open up the samurai blueprint. Create an event for the spacebar. When it's pressed we want to set a different flipbook on our sprite. During the preparation I created a flipbook for idle, attack, taking a hit and dying and so should you for your character. Here we want to set the flipbook for attacking. When pressing space now the character will play the attack animation, however it is looping. Set looping needs to be called on the sprite with new looping being unticked. Now the animation will play out once and stop, but we don't go back into our idle state. On the sprite we can scroll all the way down to the events and click plus for on finish playing. This will trigger every time a non-looping flipbook finish playing its animation. So this is the perfect timing to set the samurai back to the idle flipbook and also enable looping again on the sprite. But since the sprite stopped playing already we need to restart it. We can check if the sprite is currently playing or not and only call play on it if it is. Now this is working perfectly. We can select the notes for setting the looping to true and restarting the sprite and collapse them to a function to keep things more organized. Now it's time to create a hitbox. For this we'll attach a box collision to our character and call it hitbox. To see how far our attack reaches we can temporarily set the source flipbook of our sprite to the attack animation and the play rate to 0.1. Now we can adjust the box extent and location of our hitbox to match the animation. You can see that the hitbox also has some depth to it. This becomes important if you make a beat em up that has multiple lanes so you can set how far your attacks reach into the other lanes. Set the sprite back to the idle animation and the play rate to 1.0. For the hitbox we want to set it up so it can only hit characters and not other objects. Scroll down to the collision settings. Set collision preset to custom and set everything to ignore at first. Then set only pawn to overlap. Create a new function called hit check. We'll use this to check who is in our hitbox and apply damage to them. From the hitbox we can get overlapping actors and set the class filter to the samurai class. We then need to use a for each loop to iterate over the array of actors. This hitbox will also overlap with ourself so we need to make sure to only proceed applying damage if it's another samurai. We can then call apply damage on the array element and set up a variable for the damage amount our samurai deals with each attack. Set up a boolean variable called isAttacking. We want to set this to true whenever the attack button is pressed and to false whenever a flipbook animation is finished playing. On the tick event we can then add a branch that only executes when is attacking is true and for now call hit check from that. But as you can see there's still nothing happening. We can set is hidden in game to false on the hitbox when is attacking gets activated for visualization purposes. and set it to true when is attacking is set back to false. You can now see an outline of our hitbox whenever we are checking for hits. But the other character is a bit too far so let's move it closer. We then also want to add the any damage event here which is triggered on the receiver of apply damage. 
For now, we'll just print out the received damage. As you can see, we're getting a lot of locks for a single attack. This is because for now, we're calling hit check once for each frame for the entire time the attack animation is active. We only want to check this on selected frames of the animation. We can take a look at the attack flipbook to see which frame is best suited as an attack trigger. In this case, we want frame number 3 to be the trigger. We can get the playback position in frames from the sprite to tell us what animation frame we are currently on. Let's only execute hit check if this is equal to 3. You might expect the lock to only show up once now, but it's still showing up 4 times per attack. That's a lot less than before, but still more than we want. This is related to the flipbook being set to 15 frames per second, while the game is running at 60 FPS. This basically means that each frame of animation is actually active in the game for 4 consecutive frames. We want to place a do once node before calling the hit check to only allow to trigger once. To visualize things, we can bring down our node which sets the visibility of the hitbox down here. We unhide it when checking for hits, but hide it on every other frame. You can see that the log now only shows up once, which is great, but it's also only showing up for the first time we attack. Let's create a custom event to reset the do once node. I'll call it reset attack. We then want to call this from on playback finish to reset this between animations. Now the print string is showing up once per attack, which is exactly what we want. Playing a particle effect will give the attack some more flair. Open up the third frame of the attack sprite and add a socket. We can then position it on the location where we want to spawn the particle effect. The socket should be called hit pause. We want to create a local variable called hit something, which will default to false. When we find at least one enemy to apply damage to, we set this to true. After the loop is completed, we can set up a branch using this variable. Only if it is true do we want to spawn an emitter at location. I'll use a yellow spark effect. We can get the socket location from the sprite by typing in the socket name of hitpause. You can now see a party effect being spawned whenever we hit something. While we're at it, we might as well just add some sound effects as well here. But OBS decided not to record my audio while filming this. Let's whip up a quick health system. Create a float variable called health and set the default value to 200. Whenever any damage occurs, we want to subtract the damage from our health and set that as the new health. We then check if our health is smaller or equal to zero and create a branch. If we have no health left, a death animation will play. If the character does have health left, it'll play a get hit animation instead. In both cases, we want to set the flipbook to not looping. But if the character dies, it currently goes back to the idle animation. 
we can create a variable called is dead and set this to true when the death animation plays. This can be used to not execute anything after the unfinished playing event in case the character has died. Now we have a fully functioning melee combat system, but there are many quick and easy ways to make huge improvements to this. In 3D games, adding camera shake, slowdowns or hit stop improves the feel of combat tenfold. And this can also easily be applied to 2D combat as well. I already made an in-depth tutorial about hit stop which you can check out here.